first arrived um, on the island of Hispaniola in Santo Domingo. And we arrived there on the ground. We thought we had transportation secure to come to uh, Port-au-Prince. We ended up getting a ride to Jimena uh, on the border, staying overnight on top of a building uh, with a bunch of doctors that were working in a, in a hospital there. We caught a ride to the border. From there, hitched a ride in the back of an ambulance to get down to the Port-au-Prince airport, as close as we could get to here. From there, we sat around for three or four hours, found a very nice uh, Haitian gentleman who had been working for the UN mission. He gave us a ride in his own car, called his sister, got us up to the Hotel Montana. So it, it took us, it was quite a journey to get here to the ground. We showed up, um, not really understanding what we were going to get involved in, not really understanding how we were going to fit, but we knew that we could do some good. So the first day we opened up, there was a large group of search teams on the ground already at the site, and we didn't really, we couldn't really fit in with them. So we. Uh, decided that we were going to do anything that we possibly could. So the first day, uh, Andrew, Gretchen, and I ended up cleaning the bathrooms. They were being used by around 120 uh, search and rescue individuals, and they were pretty nasty. And so we went in there with our masks and gloves and decided we were going to clean the bathrooms. Um, we were going to make sure that these showers were running. We met a number of different people on the ground that had already established um, showers and a way to flush toilets by using the pool water. So we just helped assist with that until two days later when we were actually able to get involved with the search and rescue teams. So we got to a point where um, there were so many contractors working on the hill, there was very little left for me to do. There was still a lot of moving rubble and double checking things and I decided that it was time for me to move on to something else. It was time for me to find the next way that I could help here in Haiti and that what, that's what led me to um, helping out with water. So when I first realized that you know, water was the way to help people. We, with my friend Eric Nyman, started um, building slow sand filters, uh, an ancient technology of filtering sand. And it's great for bacteria and other things, but not necessarily great for industrial pollutants. So we, um, you know, we had many a talks with my sister who had since left and was back home on what we can do to help this out. And she had a friend that was working with this group, Selden Technologies, and they had this new water box that had this miracle filter in it. And I said, okay, a miracle filter, what is that? And it's this new nano mesh technology that's in this filter. Filters out nearly everything that's in the water. Filters out lead, filters out all these different hard metals, pesticides. Um, and she said that Selden wanted to give one of these boxes when she comes back for us to go test out. The first field test in Haiti, um, they're, they're one of the very few first field tests ever, and how it can be applicable into a situation like this. And she, I said, this is amazing, let's take this. They wanted us to find a good home for it. They wanted us to find out who we can help with this. And then also for us to be able to provide them feedback um, that then they would take into consideration to make changes for the next generation box. And, and this was an amazing opportunity for me. I get to give clean drinking water to people and give feedback how to make a product better. Um, and it, was, it was phenomenal. So um, when I first heard about this Selden Technologies water box, I was a little bit skeptical. We, we go down to one of the gnarliest rivers, uh, actually maybe not one of the most, but it's a pretty gnarly river. Um, it's filled with garbage, oil cans floating by, rotting garbage, paper, cardboard, plastic, everything everywhere. We toss this thing over the side into the water. We hook the, the water box up to an inverter on the car battery, standing on this bridge and start pumping water. And we're looking at this going, man, I hope this is good. I hope when they say 99.9999% of bacteria and 99.99% of viruses and all this other stuff, I, I hope they've done their work and I hope they tested this stuff out. And so we started drinking it and we started filling our bottles up and just drinking it and realizing that it's only going to take about 15, 20 minutes, maybe half an hour for us to really start to know if it's true. You can test something in a lab for 24 hours, but if you drink it, you're going to find out really quick if it's bad or not. And we were fine and we were good. And I was like, man, this is the greatest stuff in the world. Uh, this system right here, with all the filters that it actually comes with in this box, I can, um, I can filter 30,000 liters of water. It's 
after that, I buy replacement filters, $50 for the first one and $100 for the next one. And so five of the pre-filters cost $50 each and one of the main nano mesh filters costs $100 each and then you do it all again. So the filters are totally replaceable and that's the good thing about this system. This pump is going to last forever. Um, the new ones we have coming in are AC and DC pumps. Um, so we'll be, run, we'll be able to run them straight off of solar panels, which is exciting. Super clean and drinkable. Can get rid of the lesions by washing with clean water. You can, you know, you can have a healthy life and you can actually gain weight from, from not drinking worms in your water, not having, um, you know, constant diarrhea and dysentery and everything else that comes with dirty water. Cholera, hepatitis, all this other stuff, it's all gone. It's all out of the water. As long as you drink the good water, you're going to be fine. So this, uh, this water that, that washes off the streets and all these buildings after an earthquake, there are still hundreds, if not thousands and thousands of people still buried in buildings all over Port-au-Prince. In addition to that, you have batteries that have busted open. You have oil that is out, crushed cars with fuel. All of this is rushing down after these rains and filling these creeks and these rivers down in these basins where these kids are living, where they're bathing in. Um, diseases are already starting to build in areas. Uh, they will increase as time goes on. The kids that had been washing and playing in this river had sores on their bodies. Um, they have rashes on their necks, um, on their hands, lesions, um, all contributed towards this unclean water. And in addition to not being able to drink water, it's important that they have water at least to wash themselves in that's, that's clean. So. You know, one of the best ways that I figured we could help out was to provide them clean water. And that's a, a simple, simple thing. Clean water. That's it. Uh, in the next few weeks, uh, Selvin's going to send uh, the new version of this with the uh, integrated sediment filter inside the box, um, as well as the, the AC-DC uh, pump. And uh, I anticipate uh, trying to get these in the hands of, of multiple different NGOs and community groups around throughout Haiti. Um, they're extremely affordable. Um, there may be grant money that's available to actually provide them to them. All they have to do is fill out the paperwork. So we're looking into all of that right now. This yeah. system costs much less than any other system that they have to be able to filter this much water. And no, filter, no system exists that can filter it as well as this one. You know, I'm so grateful that Selden was able to give us the, this water box to bring down here to field test in Haiti. And, and not only that, but be able to take our recommendations for the Selden water box and, and take them back and actually make those changes. Whether they were making them before, I don't know. We made recommendations, incorporate the sediment filter, to have it be a DCAC pump instead of just the AC pump. They've made all these changes and I'm so excited to get the new, the new water box from them um, in mid-April to come down here because, um, I mean, this, this box is it's changing people's lives. It's changed my life because now I can get out there and I can say, you know, you don't have any clean water. I can't keep buying you bottles of water, but guess what? I can throw this thing in some dirty water and I can pump it out for you all day long. And as long as you got something to fill it up in, then you're getting clean water. So, um, you know, Selden's a, a, a great company. They've got a number of other products that I'm really excited to get here and test out. Um, and I'm just happy that they're enabled me to be a part of the team. It's an amazing thing that we can take a river like this, which has plenty of flow um, and turn it into drinkable water. So um, I think it's just really important for the, uh, you know, for the future of Haiti, for the future of the world to have clean drinking water. So I'd worked on the pile for four, maybe five weeks solid. And um, then I transitioned into the water. And, and that's, that's one of the reasons that I'm still here, you know, to, to be able to, to help people out in any way I can. The, the water is an amazing thing. It's a, it's a small, easy thing that I can do. It makes people smile, it makes people healthy, it saves lives, and it's phenomenal for me. And um, I'm still here. It's been uh, nearly nine weeks. It's been nine weeks since I've been here in Haiti, and um, I'm happy to be here. As long as I can continue to help people out, as long as I can continue to help change lives, then I'll keep staying here. As long as people want to support me and what I'm doing, I'm here forever. <laughs> 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 <laughs>